Welcome to our explainer on control theory in electrical engineering. This journey will unravel one of the most critical concepts in this vast field, control theory. So what exactly is control theory? In simple terms, control theory involves the study of how to make systems behave in a desired manner using feedback mechanisms. This theory forms the backbone of many systems you interact with daily, from thermostats to complex industrial automation. Understanding control theory isn't just an academic exercise, it's a practical necessity. For electrical engineers, it plays a crucial role in the design and analysis of control systems. Whether it's about enhancing the efficiency of electrical grids or ensuring the precision of robotic arms, the principles of control theory are pivotal. Throughout this series, we will delve deeper into its core principles, theories, and real-world applications. Together, we will see how control theory bridges the gap between theoretical concepts and practical engineering solutions. So, stay tuned as we lay the foundation with the basics and then build upon more intricate aspects. As we move forward, you'll see how these principles apply across diverse and fascinating scenarios. Let's embark on this educational journey together. Welcome to our explainer series on control theory in electrical engineering. Today's focus is on the basic principles of control systems. Control systems can be broadly classified into two main types, open loop and closed loop systems. So what distinguishes the two? In an open loop system, the control action is not dependent on the output. Imagine adjusting your shower without a thermometer. You turn the knob and hope for the right temperature. There's no direct feedback to indicate if the temperature is too hot or too cold. On the other hand, a closed loop system relies on feedback mechanisms to maintain control. This is akin to your modern thermostat, which continually adjusts to keep your home at a desired temperature. Feedback ensures that any deviation in the output is corrected, achieving the desired performance. Feedback mechanisms are crucial because they help the system self-correct. Whether in industrial applications or domestic appliances, understanding how these mechanisms work is key to designing efficient control systems. Next, we'll dive into the mathematical modeling of control systems, introducing transfer functions and state space representation. Stay tuned. To analyze control systems effectively, we need to represent them mathematically. This process is essential for understanding system behavior and designing appropriate controls. One common method is through transfer functions, which provide a relationship between the input and output of a system in the frequency domain. By using these functions, engineers can predict how systems will respond to various inputs. Another crucial method is the state space representation. Unlike transfer functions, which focus on inputs and outputs, state space models capture the internal state of the system. This enables a more comprehensive analysis especially for complex and multi-input, multi-output systems. Both methods are foundational tools in control theory, serving different yet complementary purposes. Understanding these mathematical representations helps pave the way for deeper insights into system stability and performance. Next, we'll explore stability analysis, where you'll learn about different criteria to ensure a system remains stable under various conditions. As we move further into the realm of control systems, stability emerges as a foundational pillar. Without stability, even the most sophisticated control system falters. So what criteria did determine stability in these systems? Enter the world of stability criteria, a set of methods designed to ensure a system maintains equilibrium. One primary method is the Ruth Hurwitz criterion. This mathematical approach helps us predict stability by analyzing the system's characteristic equation. Then we have the Nyquist criterion, another powerful tool that offers insight into stability by focusing on frequency response. Both methods, while distinct, serve a critical purpose. They allow us to foresee and mitigate instability. Understanding these criteria not only fortifies our grasp of control theory, but also enhances our capability to design reliable systems. Stability isn't just an add-on, it's imperative. Next, we'll clear up common misconceptions about control systems. Stay tuned as we continue unraveling the intricacies of control theory. In control theory, misconceptions can easily lead to flawed designs and analyses. One common misconception is misunderstanding feedback. Many think feedback simply corrects errors, 
but it's crucial for stabilizing systems and enhancing performance. Overlooking feedback's role can result in unstable or inefficient control systems. Another major misconception is overlooking non-linearities. Many assume systems behave linearly, but real-world systems often exhibit non-linear characteristics. Ignoring non-linearities can lead to significant errors in prediction and control. Nonlinearities can influence system dynamics in complex ways, making it essential to account for them in your models. Control theory provides the tools to address these misconceptions. By understanding the true nature of feedback and the impact of nonlinearities, you can design more robust and effective control systems. Next, we'll delve into practical examples showcasing these principles in real world applications. Stay with us as we transition from theory to practice demonstrating the power and relevance of control theory in electrical engineering. Let's look at practical examples and case studies where control theory is applied in electrical engineering. Imagine an automated manufacturing plant where precision and accuracy are crucial for production efficiency. Here, control systems regulate the speed and position of robotic arms, ensuring each component is assembled with exact precision. Another compelling application is in renewable energy sources. In wind turbines, control systems help optimize the angle of blades to extract maximum energy from varying wind speeds, enhancing overall efficiency. Case studies further illustrate this, such as implementing control strategies to stabilize power grids and prevent blackouts, highlighting control theory's role in maintaining reliability in electrical networks. These examples demonstrate the versatility of control theory and its significance in solving real-world engineering challenges. Moving forward, you'll see how designing these control systems involves a blend of theoretical knowledge and practical ingenuity, bridging the gap between abstract concepts and tangible outcomes. Designing control systems is a fundamental task in electrical engineering. It involves a meticulous process where every step is crucial. Let's take a closer look at the design process. First, we define the system requirements and identify the objectives. Then, we create a mathematical model of the system to understand its behavior. The next step involves selecting the appropriate control strategy, which could be anything from PID to adaptive control. After selecting the strategy, we simulate the design using specialized software like MATLAB or Simulink. These tools allow us to test and refine the system before implementation. Finally, we validate the design through rigorous testing and iterate as needed. Beyond the steps, the tools and software play a pivotal role in the design process. They provide a platform for modeling, simulation, and analysis, offering insights and enabling us to optimize performance. As we explore the intricacies of designing control systems, keep in mind that each step and tool is a building block towards creating efficient and reliable systems. Moving forward, we'll delve into more advanced topics and see how these principles apply in real-world scenarios. Stay tuned as we continue our journey through the fascinating world of control theory. For those looking to delve deeper, let's explore advanced topics like adaptive control and robust control. Adaptive control is about creating systems that can adjust their parameters automatically in response to changes in the environment. It's crucial in scenarios where system dynamics are uncertain or changing. On the other hand, robust control focuses on ensuring system stability and performance despite uncertainties and external disturbances. This approach is vital in maintaining consistent performance under varying conditions, especially in complex and unpredictable environments. By understanding these advanced topics, you can design more efficient and resilient control systems. As we move forward, you'll see how these advanced methods integrate into the broader framework of control theory and why mastering them is essential for tackling challenging aspects of electrical engineering. Welcome to our interactive Q&A session. In this segment, we'll address some common questions you might have about control theory. First, what exactly is control theory? Think of it as a set of principles that help us regulate the behavior of systems. These principles are crucial in ensuring stability and consistency, especially in electrical engineering. One frequent query is about the difference between open loop and closed loop systems. Open loop systems operate without feedback, meaning they cannot adjust based on output. 
In contrast, closed-loop systems use feedback to dynamically adjust and improve performance. Another common question revolves around the role of feedback mechanisms. Feedback helps in correcting system deviations and improving accuracy. It's the cornerstone of maintaining system stability and achieving desired responses. People also ask about the mathematical models used in control theory. We use transfer functions and state space representations to illustrate and analyze system behavior. These models are essential for designing effective control systems. Lastly, let's address misconceptions such as misunderstanding feedback's importance and overlooking nonlinearities. Addressing these ensures more accurate and reliable control system designs. Next, you'll see more practical examples and applications of control theory in action, shedding light on its real-world impact. To wrap up, let's summarize the key points we've covered and share some final thoughts on control theory in electrical engineering. We've explored the essence of control theory and its importance in electrical engineering, delving into open and closed-loop systems, understanding feedback mechanisms, and examining mathematical modeling techniques. From stability analysis with methods like Ruth Hurwitz and Nyquist criteria to addressing common misconceptions, we've clarified and demystified key concepts. Practical examples and case studies have demonstrated real-world applications, showcasing how control theory underpins modern engineering feats. We also walked through the design process of control systems, highlighting the tools and software used by professionals. Advanced topics, such as adaptive and robust control, offered a glimpse into the complexity and depth of the field. Finally, our interactive Q&A session addressed some of the most pressing questions, reinforcing our understanding. Control theory is a foundational element in electrical engineering, crucial for innovation and efficiency. Thank you for joining us on this educational journey. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and remember, control theory isn't just about systems and equations, it's about finding harmony in the chaos of our engineered world.